Hi, welcome back to the case studies. I'm here with Rochelle Celeste. And in her business, she has a major issue in that she is not really clear who she should work with or what she should work on with them. Although she has lots of intuitive information coming in on that. And she has lots of practical experience that says she could work in a certain field, which we'll, we'll talk about in a bit. So she's been struggling to get clients, having difficulty coming up with how to talk to prospective clients about what she does, what makes her service unique, um, and just struggling to get the entirety of the big picture about what, where a business is supposed to go, um, while her intuition feeds her little snack-sized intuitive morsels that don't really tell her quite what she needs. So we're gonna help her fix all that and uh, have clarity about what she's going to do and and have much clearer information coming from her intuition so i'm excited about that and uh, welcome rochelle hello thank you for having yes. me yes oh you're so welcome i'm excited to help you shift all this so let's start by connecting to the light um so just a reminder for everyone who hasn't done that uh that means take your close your eyes take your consciousness up a few thousand miles feel the truth light and love of your true self your higher self and bring that down through the top of your head through your head through your throat through your shoulders your heart Go down through your stomach, your abdomen, your hips, down through your legs and feet and go down, down, down into the earth and right into the center of the earth and feel the unconditional love, acceptance and understanding of Mother Earth and bring that light back up through your feet, your legs, your hips, your abdomen, your stomach, your heart, shoulders, neck, head. So now you have light coming from above and coming from below at the same time. And expand your heart out as big as the room you're in, as big as the building, as big as the city, across the country, as big as the planet, the solar system, the galaxy, and as big as the universe. So that's connecting to the light or TLC as I like to call it for to light connect. And let's just look at clarity on who to work with. So I, just to help listeners, how do you know that your business isn't working? This isn't just like uh, you're feeling the energy not working. Do you... It's a physical manifestation as well as a knowing that I'm, not in the right area. Um, I'm not uh, having repeat clients. I'm having difficulty with clients finding me. I'm having difficulty with uh, clients actually booking sessions. Um, wow. So yeah. you're not getting enough sales or you're getting no sales? No sales. <laughs> and how many leads do you, do you have coming in? You've got lots of leads coming in? or Right now I have nothing. I've had okay. nothing this year at all. Okay, so you've got an issue with your marketing, mm -hmm. not producing leads. Potentially, you have an issue with your sales. You know, even if you had leads, we're not clear whether you're going to convert them or not. Mm -hmm. And you said you had issue getting repeat sales. Yes. So you, when you've had sales, you've got one session, but you don't get multiple sessions. My understanding is that there are um, perceptions about uh, the field that I'm in and uh, it being covered by insurance uh, mm. versus um, not being covered by insurance. So when they find out it's not being covered, it's, they're not going back. Right. So um, interesting. So the people you are attracting uh, are confused about whether the, this thing is covered by insurance or not. Mm -hmm. That is good to know. I'm just going to make a note of that. Now, many people do similar things to what you, I mean, you help people transform the pain they have around 
well, one of the things you told me earlier you work with is, is helping women who have trauma or anxiety or low self-worth and helping them transform that to release the trauma, to have high self-worth and to be calm. Mm-hmm. Um, to come back into authentic self, whatever that yeah. is. Yeah. Now, I know plenty of energy workers who do similar work to you and have no difficulty attracting clients and getting people to pay cash and not mm-hmm. have no concern about insurance. Yes, exactly. So it's definitely possible to run a business doing that or something different if that's what makes sense to you. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think you mentioned the, you, you, you have had some messages from your intuition. You have some knowing that you need to change your business. T- tell us a bit more about what you have heard from your intuition there. Um, spirituality plays a huge role in what I'm supposed to be doing. Um, I'm not seeing it in fruition just yet. Um, I'm also getting nudges that I need to be traveling around the world, offering workshops in um, specific places that are uh, yet to be revealed. And um, I'm just not sure where those are yet or what I'm teaching. So, uh, and you, you told me earlier you had three pieces of information from your intuition. So that was two. Yeah. What's the third? I don't recall. <laughs> you said something, out, you knew there was a third, but oh, you didn't right. know what it was. Yes, that's, it's, it has to do with um, traveling and I, I, don't, I don't have a, a specific um, thing of what it is, um, but it's telling me there's more there that I need to take care of, that there's a draw that is pulling me there, but it's not giving me the details of what I'm doing or why I need to be doing it. Right. So I, I think that's useful for other people to hear because people new to using their intuition in their, in their business may not have, un, you know, may, they may not realize you, you could know that you have three pieces of intuitive information about changing your business, but you've only heard yeah. the first two. Yeah. Uh, and then you can have your ears open or eyes open for whatever the, or dreams open or however you get the intuitive information, but you can be aware there's something else coming in, um, which is an, an interesting state to be in. You don't know what it is, but it, it is coming. Yes. And it's, you're kind of feel like you're in limbo. Yeah. So, and that's okay. It's a, you know, and it's good to surrender to that and to be okay that we, we know something's coming, but we don't know what, um, you know, what it is yet or that we have some of the pieces, but we don't have all the details because, you know, one way to think of intuition is, um, you know, if you're driving from Los Angeles to New York city at night and your intuition is the headlights on the car, maybe you only see a, a, you know, a few hundred yards ahead of you on the road and you only see the road signs as they come up. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's enough to drive across country. You know, we don't have to have every single detail of every single twist and turn. You trust the roads are there. You trust your headlights are working. Mm-hmm. Um, and you have a general idea of the big, you know, you know, you're driving across country, but you don't know exactly, you know, is the road going 117 degrees to the left, you know, or whatever the thing is. That's very true. So, um, yeah. So, And we can ask our intuition to give us clearer messages. You know, what would it take for your intuition to give you a clear answer on that third piece of information? What would it take for your intuition to give you what that third piece of information is right now? Action on the first two. Ah, yeah, that's a great insight. So our intuition often works better when we take actions. Mm-hmm. It's a kind of, you know, it's like stroking a, a pet. But by taking action, it, it reaffirms the intuition. Yeah, we heard the message. Yeah. And it also gives us more information. If we take action, if, if you know, your first two pieces of information are that you should be location independent and you're supposed to be giving workshops. So yes. if you take some action and maybe it's only a small action there, um, 
that make you nearer to being location independent or you buy a ticket somewhere um, and you follow your intuition as to where to buy the ticket to, then you're going to get feedback. You know, if you bought a ticket to Barcelona, right, and then suddenly you start meeting people from Spain before you go, you start suddenly coming across more people from Spain or you suddenly connect with friends who are there or, or whatever the thing is, you know you're on the right track, right? On the other hand, if, if you, you might get other feedback that I need to alter course, you know, you're driving the car and you, you need to turn a little bit, you need to change lanes a little bit, even, you're go, even though you're going in the same direction. So I, I love that. Anything else? What, what else would it take to get clear information on that third one? It's almost like I have to be uh, um, at a specific spot and I'll know what I'm then bringing in. Okay. Um, Need to be at a specific spot. Okay. Uh, so somewhere in the world. What would it point. take for you to accept that you, what would it take for you to accept and be calm that you will know this th third thing about your business when you're at a specific spot and you don't know what that spot is yet? It'll feel like it'll just come in and I'll just know. Okay. It's, it's something that's on okay. the back So are you okay not knowing it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are you okay yeah. not knowing it in this moment? In this moment, yeah. Are you okay taking action on the, are you okay taking action on the first two things you do know? Yes. What would it take to take action tomorrow morning on, on one of those two things? I'm becoming a location independent and setting up workshops. Um, yeah. Just a small action that moves you in the right direction. You know, it could be phoning someone who knows about it. It could be looking at a ticket or it could be, you know, putting up an idea for a workshop on your website or in Facebook or whatever. Forever. could um, be talking to people who might potentially attend such a workshop to see if that would be of interest i think um the Ma many different actions the stuckness i'm feeling right now is like okay what am i offering what do i talk to people about um when, when that thought comes up what's the emotions associated with it uh, I feel like I'm floundering. I'm flailing in okay. so, a lot of information that's not making itself clear. I'm just writing that down. Floundering, uh, not processing all the information, so not getting all the information. It, it kind of feels like I'm, I have access to a lot of information, but it's not always mine. And discerning what mm -hmm. is my specific uh, information that I'm trying to uh, create that will um, that will um, attach to the energies of the of the people who I'm working with, um, so that they will find me. They'll know I'm ready to help them. So if the information is not yours, whose is it? Part of it's potential clients. Um, mm -hmm. And part of it's are the people around me. Okay. Are any of those useful for knowing wh what to do? The potential clients ones, definitely. Um, they're telling me what their problems are essentially. So how about we just, right. So the people around you, how about you just visualize their information moving further away from you and your own higher self moving <laughs> nearer. That feels so much more freer. <laughs> 
Yeah. You know, many of us uh, entrepreneurs with spiritual abilities are very empathic, which is great because we can pick up information from our clients or situations very quickly. And it also has a downside that we pick up information very quickly from our surroundings and people around us. And it's really important to learn how to block out that stuff. Otherwise, it's like you have the ability, you know, it's like you have a radio receiver, but you've got it tuned to 3,000 stations all at once. And you can't really hear the information on the one station you're trying to listen to. That's exactly what it feels so, like. <laughs> yeah. So you can visualize the other folks getting further away. You can do shielding, which you probably know how to do. You could visualize an egg of light around yourself that protects you from other people's energy. Mm-hmm. And you can do the connecting to the light. That helps. The stronger your light is, the less other people's um, information affects you. That That's sort of like tuning you know turning up the the power of the radio station so um okay so i i just want to come back to this emotion you were feeling you said you felt like you were floundering you you were not getting all the info it felt like what's the emotion when that happens you feeling anxious happy sad angry Um, something else overwhelmed Overwhelm. Um, okay. Can you name some emotions? Uh, that would create feelings of anxiety. That would, um, and then it, that feeds into feeling fear that I'm not meeting people's needs um, that need to be met through my products and services. Okay. So you, f- you feel anxiety, which is fear, right? Yeah. Where, what do you notice? Think, just imagining this situation, what do you notice in your body? I want to curl up and protect myself from um, the influx of everything coming in. Okay. Anything else? Any tense parts, warm parts, cold parts, damp parts? Um, my stomach is tight. Um, my chest is tight. Um, my throat closes up a little bit. Um, my hands get a little bit cold, um, a little bit numb. Good. So I'm going to ask you a a question in a moment and I want you to answer from your intuition. And that means the first thing that comes into your head and if any second things that come after a few seconds later, second guessing, that would be your ego talking. Okay. okay. Are you okay just answering with the first number that comes into your head, even though you may I not know what it means? <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'll sure you will. <laughs> okay. So thinking about floundering, feeling overwhelmed, anxious, not meeting others' needs, just wanting to curl up, protect yourself, your stomach's tight, your chest is tight, your throat is tight, your hands are cold and numb. What's the youngest age you felt the same way? Um, Eight. Okay, good. Who was that with? First thing that comes into your head. You don't have to have a, a rational remembering. Mom, dad, teacher, school child, someone else? Um, I think it was coming from multiple areas. Um, I was bullied a lot and um, wasn't feeling heard. So just make sure you're still connected to the light here and now. Okay. Just... You've got the light from above, the light from below. Your heart's expanded out as big as the universe. And now I want you to visualize that TLC, that connecting to the light with the light coming from above and below and expanding the heart out of your eight-year-old self when she was feeling this. And see that light like a waterfall of light just clearing away all those sensations and emotions and the belief pattern that the younger version of Rochelle created and that you've been repeating ever since over and over again. 
And let's send it also to all the intermediate versions of yourself that have repeat, because this isn't the first time you've had this pattern no. right now. You've had this throughout your life since you were at least eight years old. Right? You did it at school, you did it at college, you did it in your work. Yes. You did it, probably done it in relationships. You may have done it with health. You know, you've probably repeated this a bunch of ways. Yeah, I would, I would say that uh, it's a, a pattern that is common. Yeah. So let's just totally clear it from your entire timeline. And, um, you know, I get head twitching when I'm clearing energy. Other people yawn. Uh, some people get, you know, tummy growling. So that's what's going on for me. I'm sharing that. You probably knew that, but I'm sharing that with people watching. Um, so let's also, and that feels like some things are moving there to me. Um, yeah. Let's also clear any younger ages. Let's clear when you were conceived. Uh, and there your was birth else. and your pregnancy. Yeah. With the birth, I had the cord mm -hmm. wrapped around my neck at birth. How appropriate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, bullied at birth. Yeah. Yeah. Because bullying is a lot of it's around control, right? Yes. And I'm sure having a rope around your neck is pretty controlling and constricting. <laughs> yes. So let's see that cord unwrapping and you having a different birth. Let's just change your timelines to a parallel universe where you didn't have that birth and you had a different conception because I think something went on when you were conceived around this pattern. There was um, a belief I had uh, in childhood that um, I needed to, I was used to create safety for my mom. Mm. So you're supposed to create safety for your mom mm -hmm. by being withdrawn um, and receiving also, the bullying. By also um, bringing my parents together. So you bring your, you were, you had this pattern where you bring other people together by you get to suffer, but they get brought together. Yeah. Hmm. Well, let's clear that with light from above and below. And let's clear everywhere in your ancestor lines. So in your mother's lifetime and all her ancestors, where she and they have had this same pattern mm -hmm. of floundering and feeling anxious, tense in all those places in her, your body. And also in your father's ancestor line all him, all his experiences and all his ancestors that you have been bringing forward. But let's heal all of them right now, whether they're living or dead. Okay, they seem happy. And let's clear any past lives where you had this same pattern running. What's your intuition on how many past lives you did this in? Three to five. So let's clear all of those. You don't have to know the detail of what happened in them, but having the number gives you some consciousness on it and a way to access clearing it. I think you got hung in one of your past lives. probably hung for being a healer that the church didn't like. There is a lot of betrayal throughout a bunch of them. Mm. And being put on trial would be pretty overwhelming for many people, particularly if the threat of the trial was you're going to be executed. Yes. So let's yeah. just clear that out. Yeah, and being betrayed by those around me as well. Nice. Wow. What an, an incredible, adventurous <laughs> set of lifetimes you've had. Yeah. 
and what a great set of experiences and growth that has provided you the opportunity to have. And now in this lifetime, you've got the chance to clear all of it so you don't keep repeating it so you can have clarity yeah. on what you're getting from your intuition. It's safe, right, and good for you to hear your intuition clearly. It's safe, right, and what would it take for it to be safe, right, and good for you to hear all of your intuition and get all of the big picture? That was a big one. What? <laughs> I know. What would it take for it to be safe, right, and good for you to act fearlessly and bravely on your intuition? What would it take for it to be safe, right, and good for you to know who to work with in this moment? What would it take for it to be safe, right, and good for you to know what to work on with them? What would it take for it to be safe, right, and good for you to receive continuous streams of income from your clients? There's still something more about that one. Yeah. Well, probably if you were an energy healer or a witch or whatever in a past life and you had a regular stream of clients coming to your door, that might be a little dangerous, you know? Yes. Because <laughs> then the Inquisitor General might notice what you're up to, right? Correct, yeah. Yeah. So you maybe had to flit around and get a client here and a client there and then move on just to avoid being hung or burnt to the stake or whatever. But you don't need to do that no more. Because you just are shifting in for it to be safe, right and good for you to have regular clients and for them to pay you money for doing healing energy work with them. Because that's the other thing that a lot of people have difficulty on, that if they're doing spiritual things, it's somehow dangerous or wrong to receive money for their spiritual gifts. Mm -hmm. Right? Either from...